next piece of the presentation, I'm going to demonstrate in the one foul swoop, I want to sort of demonstrate the next three bullet points here, and that is I'm going to show, using the web client, I'm going to show the purchase requisitions functionality and the built-in workflow. Okay, so first and foremost, um, for the people who are not aware, is requisitions prior to uh, 2015 or 2013 R2, requisitions were uh, based or built within the business portal feature of Dynamics GP. That's now been uh, deprecated, so that feature, the whole business portal has been deprecated, so it's no longer available, so in, especially in 2015, the uh, purchase requisitions functionality has now been moved into uh, Dynamics GP itself. So if you want to access the requisitions, yeah, you can still do it via the web. It just means that we're using the web client. So here I am. You can see here I've just switched now. So rather than using my desktop version, I've now logged into Dynamics GP 2015 via Internet Explorer. So here I have just an Internet Explorer tab open, and I've logged into the client. And for all intensive purposes, you notice this exactly the... Um, the homepage looks no different than if I was logged on to the, uh, the client. So here I'm logging on to Dynamics GP from uh, Internet Explorer from anywhere in the world. That I don't have to have it installed. I could be in an internet cafe on the other end of the, the planet and I've logged on to Dynamics GP. So I'm going to enter a purchase requisition using the web client and on my homepage here you'll notice uh, I've logged on as GP user here as opposed to Robert. And GP user has a slightly different homepage where, for example, I have the procurement piece here. So I'm going to use this to navigate. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to, I want to enter a purchase requisition. When I click on that, it'll open up my enter purchase requisition screen. Um, come on. Here we go. OK. So there's my purchase requisition entry screen. So I'm going to enter a new purchase requisition, give it a description. Uh, I'm going to purchase today, I'm going to purchase uh, a brand new motor vehicle. It's my favourite. Brand new motor vehicle. I can add my common ID. I can stipulate a ship to address. I'm not going to bother with any of that at this stage. And all I'm going to do is come straight down to the item number here and just put in motor vehicle. You have one, one each of those, and it's going to be a $50,000 motor vehicle. And it's going to be a brand new uh, HSV motor. Oops. No, let's just be more specific. Plum Sport. Cool. Yes, for all of you out there, I am, I am a HSV fan. So there we go. So because it's a requisition, I don't, you'll notice here that I can enter a creditor ID on a line-by-line -line item basis, so I can be purchasing or raising a requisition for line items that potentially may, this one requisition may actually generate multiple purchase orders. Uh, I'm just going to keep it simple today and just have the one line item, but I'm not going to stipulate a creditor ID because the creditor ID may potentially be ultimately stipulated by my purchasing officer in my organisation. But by all means, if I did have the creditor ID, Oh, I didn't know who I was going to purchase from, I could add that here, as well as the site ID. If I wanted to, I could also click on the attach button here and attach a copy of, say, for example, a quote that I may have, that I may have, that I, um, uh, I may have seeked in the, from the supplier in the, in beforehand. But, and we'll talk more about that, this attach functionality in the next section where I, I talk about attachments and sales laws and so forth. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm now going to hit the Submit button. So keep it fairly simple. Hit the Submit button so that this requisition um, makes its way around the um, workflow that I've configured. Now, my workflow is going to be fairly simple. Uh, I'm going to say, please approve as I need it for the weekend. Cool. Let's hit Submit. And off it goes. So now... I'll log out of here, close this down, I'll exit GP and log out of that. So I've done my bit and off it goes into um, the, well, not that, into the workflow. So if I come into my email, come into Outlook, I can see a couple of things have happened. I get a 
email now. Being the approver here, I get an email saying, hey, have a look here, Mr. Approver, requisition 15 needs to be approved. So I can click on that hyperlink here with the requisition number, and when I do click on that, you'll notice in the background here, it's actually opened up that requisition so I can view that requisition and what's on that directly from the email that I received. Yeah. So I can now view that, I can have a look at what, 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 you know, what's being requested and so forth and make a, a decision on that. If I then want to approve that, what I can do is if I come into my email again, yeah, I can then click on one of these shortcuts here, so the uh, whole hyperlink I should say, so the approve, reject or delegate one and approve directly from the email. So if, once again, if I'm out on the road or remote or not in the office, and I want to be able to do this from my phone, from my tablet device, whilst I'm out on the road, I can now click on the Approve button, and you'll see here that when I do, simply all it's doing is opening up a little uh, portal in my, uh, using a, just a browser access, and I can now hit the, put in a comment here and hit the Approve button. So I'll say, sure, sounds like a nice car and say hit approve and I've in effect what I've done there is I've approved that requisition without even going into the application. So if I switch back now into the application and I open up that requisition, and I'm just going to push the requisition entry, let's have a look at what's happened here. So here it is, requisition number 15, we could see that the uh, workflow bar that displays across the page here is now showing as completed and I'm just going to click on the view uh, history here to have a look at the workflow. Now of course I've, I've created some fairly simple workflow to demonstrate the workflow functionality. In other words, the workflow I've set up on this particular requisition entry screen is purely just going to ask the um, uh, workflow to be approved if it uh, exceeds $1,000 and it just goes to one approver. So here we can see the original step that when the uh, requisition was first created with the comments that were entered, so please approve because I need it for the weekend, and then the approver and the approver's comments. Yep, sounds like a nice car. So we have all that workflow approval uh, history showing to us. Okay, so that's sort of in one sort of one action or what one bit of functionality there, We've sort of did, what we're showing you there is the use of the web client to raise a requisition. So with the new GP 2015, there's some new licensing, obviously, to move any users out there who are currently using uh, the, the business portal to raise requisitions. That's now obviously functionality is now being migrated to within GP, and there's obviously users that have been created within GP. Rather than be a full user, you can be a, a limited user who can raise requisitions. So speak to your uh, account manager about that if you if you need to do that. Um, okay, and yeah, so we've used the web client. We've uh, shown you the requisition, which is fairly the, the new functionality, which has been migrated to within GP, and we've also showed the workflow. Now I've shown you workflow today purely around the purchase requisition entry, but there's a whole host of workflows that are in the system. So there's workflow around purchase orders, workflow around requisitions, which I've shown you workflow. Um, we we'll actually have workflow in the next release, which is due next month. We have workflow around accounts payable invoices. There's workflow around GLGL batches. There's already workflow around accounts payable batches, um, and some are around, say, vendor and vendor approvals. So there's a whole host of workflows, and, can, and Microsoft just continues to add to that list of workflows um, as the product moves forward. So yeah, stay tuned to this uh, space.